Now we've looked at how to use variables to store an individual value and that a value could be something like an integer, a floating point number, a text string or a boolean value. Um, uh, so we can create a program like this. Imagine I wanted to generate my um, lottery numbers. So I want six numbers uh, that are random between 1 and 49 and I could do this with six separate variables to represent the six balls and I could set them each to be a random number and then I could print them out uh, like that. So I click run and we can see it's picked me some numbers there and I can do that again and it will pick me a different set of six numbers. However, we can see straight away that we've got a problem there because it's picked 12 twice. So one of the problems with doing it like this is because each ball is stored in a separate variable, it's difficult to compare. We don't want duplicates and to avoid duplicates when we draw ball 2 we'd have to compare that with ball 1 and when we pick ball 3 we'd have to compare that with 2 and 1 and when we pick 4 we'd have to compare it with 3, 2 and 1 etc. So that's quite a lot of comparisons and a bit fiddly to do with separate variables and when we come to print them out, I've printed them out there but it'd be quite nice if I could have them in alphabetical order uh, or numerical order and to do that I'd probably have to write my own code a bubble sort or a, a selection sort something like that uh, to get them in the right order. So Individual variables, all well and good for things like scores, but less good for collections of things. So when we're dealing with a collection of things, most programming languages have things called arrays. Now, Python doesn't support arrays, but it contains um, things called tuples and lists, which are very similar. I'll just spend a second uh, explaining the difference, because if you're doing a GCSE in computer science, you will need to know what an array is. And uh, the main difference is an array all of, the, all of the items in the collection have to be the same type, so they all have to be integers or all have to be floating point numbers or all have to be text strings, for example. And the other big difference is if you uh, say that your array is going to contain 10 items, you don't have to fill it up from naught onwards. You can put item 9 in first if you want to, whereas with a list, you can't have an item 9 if you haven't got an item 8, so you have to fill up from the start. So that's the key difference. Um, so what's the difference between a tuple and a list and how do we use them? Well, let's have a look. The, the main difference is that a tuple is fixed. So it's a bit like the difference between a constant and a, re and, and a variable to a certain extent. So a tuple, you can create a, a list effectively of items but they don't get changed throughout the program. So they're good for reference, and we'll have a look at that uh, a bit later on. Uh, a list is basically the same. A list is a list of items, but your program can change or add uh, to that list. So if we were going to use a list for this program, how would we do it? Well, this is probably how I would do it. To create a list, you use square brackets. So you can say something like ball equals, and then you can put some... Um, numbers in so I could say so square brackets one two three so the items in the list are separated by commas um, if it was a tuple it would be exactly the same but it would be um, uh, replicates just been a little bit too clever there and uh, auto inserting the, the closed brackets there so it'd be exactly the same just with uh, ordinary parentheses instead. You can create an empty list so before you add to a list you need to create it so if I want to write a program that stores values in a list I need to have an empty list to begin with so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to create an empty list called ball which is going to contain all the numbers that I've picked so before we do that, I'm just going to have a, show you how a list works. So uh, I'll, I'll use the right-hand side here. So I'm going to just call it list. And uh, I can, as I said, I can have multiple things in there. So I can have, uh, I can have text, I can have an integer, and I can have uh, a floating point number, and I can have a Boolean value. And I can type in or print that and it will show me what's in there. I can refer to each of the individual values uh, with a number called the index and that tells me the position of the item within the list. Now we start counting at zero so in this case list uh, zero will give me text because it's the first item in the list. If I say list one then that will give me the second item, either the item at position one because we can start at zero, uh, which is the one. Um, I can also um, do things like change those values. So if I say list one equals two, 
and look at my list now, we can see that the second item in the list has changed. Um, tuples are exactly the same, except um, if I do this, I use I use an ordinary parenthesis. So if I said uh, text one two point five and false, for example, I can type in tuple and I can see what it contains. I can say tuple uh, zero. Still, so we still use square brackets when we're using the index to refer to specific items from the tuple. Um, but if I say uh, tuple one uh, equals two, so if I try and change that value, it'll say no. So it's the values the values in the tuple are fixed, but other than that, it behaves uh, in pretty much the same way. Um, there's also a variety of other commands that you can use. So if you want to add to a list, so let's just have a get our list back. If I want to add a list, uh, an item to a list, I can say um, list dot append, and then in brackets I put the name of the thing that I want to add to the list. So uh, if I want to add, put some text on the end, then we can have a look, and that's added it to the end. Um, there's also a command called extend. So extend behaves in a similar way, except it adds a list uh, to the end rather than a single item. So if I put a list in here, so two and three, um, so that's a list. So it doesn't have to be a, a variable list. It can be a kind of literal list. And that, so that's added two and three to the end of my list. Um, if I want to put something somewhere else, um, then, for example, if I want to insert something at the start, I can say list dot insert. Um, so I give it the index where I want to put it. So if I want to put something at the start, I can put it at index zero, and then I can put in the text. And that's quite useful because when you extend or append, it always goes on the end. But that allows me to put it anywhere I like in the list. Obviously, the number will have to be a valid item um, from the list. We can remove an item. So if I want to uh, remove the, the word text from my list, which is item one, isn't it? Because start is zero, text is one. So we can go um, remove, um, sorry, remove, remove, remove an item. So we, we, when we're removing, using remove, we refer to the actual item that we want to remove. So we remove text. Okay, and that will remove that item from the list. If that if text would had appeared several times, so we've got two twos there. Notice. So if I say list dot remove um, two, it only removes the first one. Um, if I want to remove an item by number, then I can use pop. So list dot pop will remove the index. Uh, so if I wanted to remove that two point five, for example, that's item one. It tells me what I've removed, so I've removed the 2.5, and we can see that that's gone. If I don't put a number in there, it just uh, takes the one off the end. If I want to, to know where something is within the list, I can use the uh, index method. So if I say list index, so if I want to know where hello is, it'll tell me it's at position 2. If I want to know how many times something occurs within a list, so I want to know how many times uh, true appears in there, I can say list.count true, and it'll tell me that it appears just once. But if I do list.append, so let's stick another true in that list. So now we do list.count true, and it'll tell me that there's two occurrences. And what I can also do, and this won't make um, a great deal of sense because uh, I've got a mixture of different types in there, but I can do list.sort to sort them into order. It doesn't take any arguments, um, so, yeah, so it's, it's complaining that it doesn't like that, but if I do list equals, um, so if I do 2, 1, 3, for example, and then I do list.sort, it'll sort them into order, and if I do list dot reverse it'll reverse the order of the list so that's probably the the main methods that uh, you're going to use 
with a list. So there's quite a lot there, but obviously you can pause the video, move backwards and forwards and see what I'm doing there. So let's have a look at how you would use those in a program. So I'm going to start off with an empty list. So just my square brackets. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is pick my six numbers. So I'm going to say for n in range six, because I want to do this six times. And then, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ball list and I'm going to append a random number to it. So I'm going to do rand int and uh, one, 1 to 49 is the, uh, the lottery ball numbers. Okay, uh, so that's it for actually creating my list and then I might want to print that out. Uh, but actually I might want to um, sort it first. So I'm going to go ball.sort and and then I'm going to print ball. Now printing a, a list gives me the whole of the list. So if I run this now, it's going to show me the list that it's generated. But potentially there's no checking for duplicates in there. So I um, usually you don't have to do it that many times before you find a list with duplicates in there. So in fact, we've got two lots there. So we've got 45 and 47 both appear twice. So what are we going to do about that? Well. If we want to check, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and I'm going to store it in a variable. Because, I, because I'm going to use it twice, obviously if I just use randint it's going to change. So I'm just going to call it num. Okay. Um, so I'm going to generate a random number called num. And then I want to check that it's not already in the list. So I'm going to say while uh, num in ball. So basically what that's saying is if that number is already in the uh, the list, then um, we'll generate another one. So generate a random number. If it's already in the list, we'll generate another one. Now I didn't use if there because generating another one might be not enough. So the second one I generate might also um, already be in the list. So using while means I'm repeatedly going to do that regeneration until I find one that isn't in the list and then I'm going to write that number to the um, into the list I want to append it to the list and I'm going to sort it and I'm going to print them out so now hopefully I shouldn't get any duplicates so obviously to verify that was really the case I'd have to do a lot of examples but it's it's looking okay so far it's surprising how few times you have to do uh, the generation of six numbers to get duplicates. So usually I would say you get duplicates about half the time. So you can see this is looking okay. And if I wanted to process that in some other way, I could I could have a loop. So we can see that not only this, is this program shorter, but it's sort of uh, more consistent and tidier because we're just repeatedly doing the same thing. It's easier to sort and it's easier to print those items out because we can just print the whole list and it does that for us. Um, so we can, um, we can use uh, arrays and tuples to store and generate collections of like things. And you might do this for you know, collections of characters in a game, for example, um, that you can, you can process them all in a similar way. You can go through the list of um, characters and check they haven't you know had collisions or run out of lives or whatever um, but the other use of tuples and lists is for reference so we use we're generating random numbers here and in this case we are actually using them as numbers but what about if we wanted to um, generate a random day of the week for example or if we wanted to pick a person uh, from a, a list so you might have been in a class for example when the teacher pulls names out of a hat for answering questions. What about if we want to do something like that? Well, what you could do is you could, obviously there's seven days in a week, so you could say day equals rand int. Um, well, let's go for uh, naught to six, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so, so obviously that will give us a number from 0 to 6, one of seven possible values. We could use if. We could say if day equals 0, then print Monday. If day equals 1, then print Tuesday, etc. But um, a, a more concise thing to do would be to store those days in... Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is we don't even need to store 
this value. We're only going to go for one day. So I'm just going to put that out of the way. I'm going to I'm going to create a tuple called day. The reason I'm going to use a tuple is because it's used for reference. The, the names of the days of the week don't change. So um, let's go for Sunday, um, Monday, and it doesn't even matter really what order I put them in. So choose. Let's put all the days of the week in. Tuesday. Wednesday, so it's slightly more fuffy to type with the speech marks and things. So Thursday, and it's slightly more difficult because Replit puts the uh, speech marks in for you as well. So Friday and Saturday. Okay, so we've got a list or a tuple, which is a kind of read-only list, if you like, uh, of days of the week. And we're just going to use our random number as an index to pick one of those out. So rand in 0 to 6 is going to generate a number from 0 to 6, which corresponds with the possible indices of numbers within this list. So day 0 will be Sunday, day 1 will be Monday, up to day 6, which is Saturday. So all we need to do is print, print um, day and use that random number as the index. There you go. So if we run that now, it will use that random number as an index from the tuple to give me a random day of the week. So it gave me a lot of Saturdays there, slight cause for concern, but that's the nature of randomness, isn't it? So people are a bit suspicious if you get the th same thing three days, um, three goes running, but actually it'd be even more suspicious if you ran the program three times and it went Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So that's the nature of randomness. You can get the same thing consecutively. So that looks like it's working. So we can also do that um, for sometimes it can be useful for other things as well so as well as random days of the week um, if we wanted to convert a digit into a word for example um, then we could do that we, we could have um, or we could have a, a tuple with first second third fourth and we could generate a number and we could do it like that or so if you wanted to do what one of the tasks i give my students is to produce the song lyrics to the 12 days of Christmas. So you could have a, a tuple with the presents in, a tuple with first, second, third, you know, for the first day of Christmas, the second day of Christmas, and construct uh, the lyrics like that using nested loops. So there's all sorts of things you can do when using um, tuples or lists for reference. And if you want some further examples, if you have a look in the text at the bottom of this video, there's a link uh, to an article that I wrote about how to use um, arrays or lists or tuples in just such a way.